Hello everyone, this is Welcome Home Doggy, and I'm Tim Cordier, your host. Today we'll be featuring Tracy Dean of the Georgia Pet Foundation. Tracy, well, good afternoon. Uh, it's nice to have you here, and uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to spend with us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Yeah, Tracy, could you tell us exactly what is the, the Georgia Pet Foundation? Um, actually, I'm glad that you asked, because the Georgia Pet Foundation can cause some confusion when people hear the name, they think it's a rescue group. We are not a rescue group. It was created specifically um, for a, spa a specialty spay-neuter license plate that raised sustainable funding for spay-neuter grants. Oh, gotcha. And what's your role in, in the organization? I am the board chair and a very active volunteer. And how did you get involved? I Well, f funny you should ask. I, um, I have been in the trenches of rescue for more than 30 years. and. And honestly, I can't remember a point in my life when I didn't rescue animals. And um, I started out individually taking in animals and um, rescuing them, then uh, changing uh, ordinance, local ordinances, and then joining boards and creating um, uh, larger foundations to help with uh, the save rate of animals. And during that time, there was such a flood of animals that I remember telling my friend we have got to stop Fit at the Source, and she is actually the founder of this organization. And so she had asked me to come on board, and I couldn't come on board um, until recently, but in the, I was at the initial discussions when it was formed in 2016, and then formally joined the board in December of 2019, uh, 2018. And you have a license plate initiative, right? Is that, we is do. that correct? Yeah. We do. Could, could, could you uh, talk a little bit about that? Sure. So. Um, we have a specialty license plate. There, there is no manufacturer's fee on it. Um, Governor Nathan Deal signed it into legislation. And so when you go to your local tag office, you can purchase it by paying $25 more than the standard tag. And it usually takes about two weeks for the tag to arrive. And I know that has been discouraging to some people that when they go to purchase a tag, they think they're gonna be handed a tag right then. But mm. um, honestly, the Georgia Department of Revenue has kind of changed the model and a lot of tags have to be ordered, and it discourages people because they want to tag instantly, but I can assure you it's worth the wait, and it creates sustainable funding to end senseless killing in Georgia. And so what does that funding go towards, you know, the, the funding that the tags are generating? Yes, okay, well, let me backtrack. So $25, is it costs $25 more than the standard fee. The first year, $19 is, um, goes towards the spay-neuter grant, and every year that it's renewed, we get $20 for that $25 renewal. And so these grants, we, we operate on a very streamlined budget because we don't um, have a lot of overhead. We have one part-time person. We have a, a very active board that consists of the um, animal welfare industry, mm -hmm. uh, veterinarians, um, animal control industry, and uh, business leaders and so we are all willing to roll up our sleeves and make this happen and keep the the organization streamlined so the majority of the money can go to spay neuter grants statewide and those grants are, are offered to who who, who can uh, who, who qualifies for the grants well um, the people that can qualify would be nonprofits rescue groups um, shelters animal controls veterinarians and we opened it up to all of these these entities because we know that there are areas in Georgia that have no resources. They call them um, a desert of resources. Mm -hmm. And it's a lack of animal controls, shelters, rescues, and, and or veterinarians. And there are many, many counties that have none of those. And there are a lot that have just one or two of those. And so we knew that we, we have concerned citizens in those areas, and so we had to get very creative. So a neighboring county that has resources can actually apply for a grant on behalf of a county that has no resources. Gotcha, gotcha. So you've been involved with the, uh, this organization from the get-go? Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Right. What's, been your, um, what's been your most satisfying experience working with them? Wow, okay, so that's a hard one. Um, I'll, first, I'll start with social media. We have, a, what, what has been most satisfying for me is creating a social media community. And so we have created a following statewide and it's growing and it's amazing. Every time we talk to people, they say, we didn't know you existed. 
we thought we were alone in the trenches. Mm. And so it's weaving together these um, individuals, these groups, these communities, and letting them know that they are not alone. And, and it serves a purpose for us also because we know that the industry is a very sad, heavy subject because it has a very dark side. And we wanted this to be a little lighter because a lot of groups that you see tug at your heartstrings. And so we always promote the tag. We always um, share something that would benefit a community that they could implement mm -hmm. in their community, like, um, like the police departments that are adopting um, a community a community pet to be an ambassador and ride around in the police car with them <laughs> you know just really great ideas that you can implement in your community and it gets another animal a home um, and then we always have something funny so that it will make people smile or or um, touch their hearts and we share each other groups post so that it gives them visibility uh, across the board and they see that there are other groups doing similar things but what I'm most proud of about that is it's the re when I look at the statistics um, the response rates are, are super fast and so our community is waiting for the post and when they're they're responding immediately when it comes up and so um, I actually broke our rule one night and I got a request. Um, wait, 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 you broke, I the, broke you, the rule. You're, you're a rule breaker? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you know the rules. <laughs> but um, what I did was I took, I, I got an email from someone that found a dog in Florida. And they it had a microchip and it was connected to someone in Atlanta. They couldn't find the owner in Atlanta. And so they reached out to our group and said, look, we're desperate to find the owner of this dog, but they moved. And so I thought, you know what, it, it doesn't fit, <laughs> and it's not something that I normally want to do, but I'm gonna put it out there because I want to see, are they really a group that's um, responding to a call to action? And they immediately responded, and within, that was a Friday night, and by Sunday, that dog was reunited with the owner who had moved to South Carolina and drove to Florida and picked the dog up. It had hopped out when he stopped at the gas station. So I saw the potential in this that we are doing what we had set out to do with the social media was not only to promote the tag, but to do more, to leverage it, get a greater return on investment by networking the people. And the resources were phenomenal. So, so we could easily create a subgroup under our group that if these same members wanted to join the subgroup on, say, Facebook, they could put out a call to action on that and be able to solve the problem quickly mm. in real time. So that is something that I would love to see coming on board soon. What a great story. What, what a fabulous story. And you've, as you said, you've been involved in this work since uh, as a child? As, as, as a growing child. Up? Well, my, um, I, it's funny because I have a photo of my great, great grandmother. It's, a, it's actually a daguerreotype. And she's surrounded by all these animals and she's feeding them and the story is that she was always taking in every stray and uh -huh. and i know every generation that i've talked to my family has done the same thing my mother did it i've grown up with it and my poor family that's all they have known but um i remember when i got married um i was working i was i was working in Carrollton, and i was going to uh, grad school in atlanta and living in uh, getting ready to move to Columbus. And so I did a promotion in Carrollton and went to the animal control facility and I saw all these animals and it was horrific. And I said, look, I'm gonna do, I've, I've gotta do a radio promotion anyway, so I'm gonna put the word out for you and I want you to get these animals adopted. But this, please call me if they don't get adopted, especially this one. And so on Monday, I call over, all the animals got adopted except the one and I went, are you, are you kidding? And they said, no, everybody showed up to adopt the dog, but we kept it for you because it was meant for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, because of your family tradition. <laughs> because of my family tradition. So I adopted Maddie and I was thinking, what am I going to do? I'm living in this apartment in Atlanta. I'm getting married. I'm in grad school. And so I gave Maddie to my husband as a wedding present. And so this is how we started out our marriage. He, he knew he was in trouble and he was so awesome about it. And she was the most fabulous dog for our family and lived out her whole life with us. But 
But that was the introduction to my husband to my world. And I resisted it and would kind of fly under the radar just rescuing on my own until um, I made great friends that were going, you know, come help join ranks with us and help us change the ordinances. Come join ranks with us and do more. And my dear, dear friend started a group in Columbus called Pauls. And it was um, a new group and they were trying to change the city. And she kept begging me, Tracy, will you come join us? And I was resisting. And at that time, my daughter was five. And she said, Mom, please, we have to. And so how do you turn down your five-year-old? And that's when I went mainstream. So I started volunteering with her organization. And the competing organization said, come join our board. And I, I said, only with the intent that the organizations merge. And they said, that's great. And so we merged them and became the largest group in Columbus and helped lay the found work to take Columbus no kill. And Columbus has been, um, has not euthanized any animals in over 365 days. In over a year? In over a year. What an accomplishment. They, every person, every group, because there were a lot of groups that sprang up, lots of, um, engagement of weaving the community together. The mayor got involved all the way down to the trenches working up, and that's how it was done. A lot of hard work, but unity. And so that's when my friends were saying, please come help us with this statewide. And I've always believed that it's been such a huge issue that it has to stop with the, the parents so that they don't keep populating. Then if you don't ever see their faces, they're not unwanted. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're humanely treated. It's healthier for the animals. So Georgia Pet Foundation is a statewide organization. It is a statewide organization. You're organization. covering, what, 159 counties? 159 counties, yes. And our tag is in 123 of those counties right now. So some of the counties aren't, aren't they're not represented? Well, it takes someone to purchase a tag. And so we, we have worked hard to get visibility in every single county. And how do you do that? How do you go about getting visibility in, in these? Grassroots efforts. We are literally beating the bushes, volunteers, and um, our, our part-time person, Anna, um, contacting each and every county and trying to engage with them, let them know about us, finding out what their needs are, connecting them with resources because because our board is made up of, of representation of the industry, mm -hmm. when we hear the needs, even though our mission is spay neuter grants, we feel like we have been blessed with a lot of gift and talent. We need to use that. And so we can tap them and ask, hey, do you have a solution for this problem that this county is dealing with? And they'll give us a connection and we can give it back to the county. And they can be doing something with it while we are still growing funds to open up grants in their area. Now, are those counties that aren't represented currently, are those some, some of the counties that um, are dealing with the issue of, of, pet, of vet deserts? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Um, a, a lot of the, the areas with the desert of resources, they have, high poverty levels mm -hmm. and and it's hard when you tell and this is this is where I struggle here it's hard to go into a community that has that's living 30 percent below poverty level and mm -hmm. you say you know what we're worried about your pets but we don't really care that you can't get food on your table we can't do that and we're not doing that and so when we hear of issues we can do reach back to friends or other groups or other connections and make connections for them to mm -hmm. get resources there because that is being a good neighbor and doing the right thing. And we feel strongly about that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So if our viewers wanted to get involved with your organization, how exactly would they do that? Well, they could visit our, our website and sign up for a newsletter and they will get updates of what we're, we're doing, what grants we've given out, um, the results from those grants. Do you have parties? Um, we do not have parties. <laughs> <laughs> but you <laughs> will now, right? <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> we, um, there is another organization, Fix Georgia Pets, that we partner with, and they raise money through events. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, um, and we, we partner a lot. And I'll give you an, a great, well, let me go back to the question about, go to the website, sign up for the newsletter, yes, and social media that they can follow. But I want to give you a great example of partnering with other groups. So we opened our first grant cycles in 2019, and um, we thought we'll be 
fortunate to get one cycle open, but we, the money has been growing, and so we opened two cycles. And um, we got a phenomenal grant application that was just unbelievable to assist three counties. It was a, a low cost spay neuter clinic that worked in these three counties that were of need and had um, a, a great price for spay neuters and to be able to assist the families also. And they, they said, um, will, you, will you fund this? What well, was a lot more than we had? And I went, you know, this is leaving money on the table. We can't possibly do this. So I went to Fix Georgia Pets and I asked, hey, um, would you be open to funding what we can't fund and we partner in this? And they did. And this organization was able to go to a corporate sponsor and double it. And so that's leveraging resources. Oh, that's great. And that is what we want to do. Not just let the sell a tag, let the money grow. We want to be a true community of resources and leverage that to make a difference because we really want to end the senseless killing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in doing that, I mean, you're building families too. When you, you think are. about it, you're, you're really, you're, you're building families and it's a humanitarian effort. It's really a, a remarkable. How much money have you raised with, your, uh, with the uh, license plate initiative? I, mm, I, I can't tell you that right offhand. I know that this year we were able to get out right under 50,000 in grants. And in one year? And, and this year, we, we were founded in 2016, and it takes a long time to establish a nonprofit and grow it and get the awareness. And so, and it's expensive. So, um, we need to have some parties. <laughs> we need some parties. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, so, we had a donor who covered the, a lot of the overhead mm -hmm. so that the, the money from the tags could be um, distributed in grants. And then, of course, the rest is volunteers rolling up their sleeves and making it happen. This up this year, 2020, I keep saying this upcoming year, it is 2020. <laughs> we are actually targeting to try and get 100 to 150,000 out in grants. Oh, wow. So we are growing. Okay. And so when you do this initiative, this, this driver's uh, plate initiative, mm -hmm. um, how, do you, how do you promote that? How do you promote that within, within the state, in other words? Within the state, we, we communicate with every single shelter, rescue, veterinarian, animal control statewide, every county. And then the counties that have no resources, we find the resources in the neighboring counties that are trying to support them, and they tell us who the locals are and you won't believe this, just this past week, I spoke to several groups that basically covers 20 counties that have very few resources and lots of individuals that did set up nonprofits, but they, they are literally in the trenches. They don't have time to, to apply for grants or look for funding, so they're paying out of pocket. One woman I spoke to works four jobs. She's, she says she cleans toilets as one of the jobs and she uses all that funding to support paying for the spay neuters. And she drives her personal car an hour and a half each way, picking up animals, taking them to the nearest clinic and back. And this, this is one woman who's dedicated. I spoke with another woman who has a nonprofit in another area and it, she had just set this nonprofit up. She doesn't have time to raise money and she's selling Avon online and all the proceeds from her sales of Avon, she spay neuters these animals. So there are really good people that are trying to help families because, and, and let me back up, when I said about people living below poverty line, these animals don't know how much money you have in your bank account. They don't know your education level. They don't know your political affiliation. They don't know your, they don't know any of this. And they don't they, care. They don't care. <laughs> they love you. There are many families that love their pets. And does that mean we would say, well, if you don't have the money, you shouldn't have a pet. No, because I have worked with a homeless woman that had two dogs that kept her grounded, mentally mm -hmm. ground, grounded. And so it's like, this woman treated these animals better than I saw some of the wealthiest people I know treat theirs. So you can't, you can't put a price tag on that. And so we are trying to reach more people through grassroots efforts. And you we have an army, it sounds talking. like. It sounds like you have an army of humanitarians here. Which, I uh, wish we had an army. Yeah. I, I hope people sign up. We have a lot of dedicated people that 
that really want to see the change because there's a lot of compassion fatigue out there and compassion fatigue is real. People suffer depression, they commit suicide, they're in the trenches, even veterinarians. Um, suicide yeah, we've, d we've had that discussion with one of our guests, the amount of uh, suicide rate with veterinarians, which yes. was uh, something that I had no idea yes. that was an issue. It, it is a huge issue. And, and just in the last 12 years, I know of people that I would call friends in the trenches in other counties that were trying to stem the, the waterfall with a bucket and they're gone. They're gone. They yeah. couldn't take it anymore. They're gone. They're not here. And it's like when you have really fine people with hearts like that, you want to undergird them and you want to get them support and let them know you're not alone. Not only are you not alone, we can help you figure out long-term solutions because it's one thing to do a spay neuter, but share with us your hopes and your dreams and maybe we can connect with some of the resources that we already have on our board or their friends or their connections and see if we can't solve that issue. And um, one of the areas that we're working with right now, Southwest Georgia, 10 county area, half of those have no resources, none. One, one of the communities is the only one that has the um, shelter. And when you have an area like that, that shelter can never get their kill rates balanced because even if they are dealing just within their city limits, you have the, all the neighboring counties dumping the animals and they're overflowing because people are going, we can't pay our bills, we'll drop them in the neighboring county and they'll end up at that shelter. Well, they do, but it's, it's hard. So we're going, you know what? Tell us what your short-term, your intermediate and your long-term plans are. Let us see if we can help walk this through with you. And we made connections for them and they have been phenomenal phenomenal to work with and the plans that we're working on that those people will see in the next few years it's going to be a game changer for them well i just want to say this i think you're phenomenal seriously you're Thank truly you. a, a humanitarian it's uh, you're making this world a better place because of your efforts and i think you should be applauded for it and i think it's absolutely wonderful that you've uh, You've taken on a family tradition, and, and you've give, given such a, a wonderful example to your to your daughter. Is, is she still involved with, uh, <laughs> with with helping you? Uh, Funny you should ask. <laughs> you know, so we roll up our sleeves. Well, we we bring in our family too. So my husband, my son, my daughter-in-law, my daughter. They are all involved, and, and it's funny because I used to get their schools involved when they were little, and most of them went to college with my daughter, and every time I'd go visit her and see them on campus, they'd go, Mrs. Dean, <laughs> Mrs. Dean, we're still volunteering at a shelter, and I'm going, these are my seeds that are multiplying, and that's raising up the next generation, and I feel we can raise the next generation, but I can't take the credit for this because there are so many phenomenal people that made it happen and even the founder Jenny Milner she this woman is lovely oh oh uh, the politicians uh, uh, oh, Guy uh, Milner yeah Guy Milner, Milner. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh she's the founder of uh, Georgia she, Pet she and Guy yes oh. are, are one of the some of the founders of Georgia Pet Foundation and Fix Georgia Pets but she would rather be in the trenches making change for people than having a nice luncheon somewhere else and that, that is what we are about. We are about what can we do to make it better for our friends and neighbors. And you're doing it too. That's, that's a pretty remarkable. Again, I want to applaud you. I think it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing. And thanks for coming on the show. Um, it's, been, it's just been a real pleasure hanging out with you. It really has. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, I just want to thank Tracy Dean for joining us once again. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. Um, again, this is Tim Cordier, and this is Welcome Home Doggy. We'll see you next time. Pet overpopulation is a national problem. Georgia has some of the highest euthanasia rates in the country. With an area the size of Maryland without basics like animal control, rescues, shelters, or even veterinarians. The Georgia Pet Foundation provides statewide spay-neuter grants to organizations to help decrease pet overpopulation. Do your part to help. Purchase a Georgia Pet Foundation spay-neuter tag through your local tag office with proceeds going to support spay-neuter efforts in Georgia. Buy a tag. Save a life.